pop quiz. What's the most important control on a limiter and why? Leave your answer in the comments. What's up everybody, Will Borza here. I'm a mastering engineer. You're watching the analog vlog. It's a vlog, analog. Everything you know about limiters is wrong. Okay, probably not. But if you don't know about the history of mastering and how the limiter came to be, specific placement and techniques that mastering engineers have been using, you might not be using it right. I don't know about you, but when I reach for a limiter, I'm not looking for just extra volume, I'm looking for a togetherness, cohesion. Glue, perhaps, is the common nomenclature. Limiters, after all, do have time control. They're not time agnostic. If I just wanted more gain, I'd simply reach for the gain knob. So I want to tell you about this technique because I don't see it being taught online much. I think it needs to be taught because I think it's extraordinarily important to getting major label sound. When I first started using limiters this way, my masters shot way up in quality. So picture for yourself better masters and yourself the master of your own limiter. For all of this to make sense, I have to give you the short, short version of the evolution of the mastering signal chain. I will be as brief as possible. So let's start by picturing three zones, zone one, zone two, zone three. So each one of these zones has traditional techniques and procedures that you do in each zone. We will call zone one the calibrate stage. Calibration and of course gain staging. You want to be hitting your gear at its headroom sweet spot. Zone two, the enhance stage. EQ, compression, all that fun stuff that gets romanticized about mastering. And zone three, the finalize stage, where you place a final digital limiter and then you do your editing, sequencing, metadata, etc. Typically, in the beginning of time, you could not perform different actions in other zones. Now, of course you can, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So in the beginning, there was tape and it was good. The original mastering chain looked something like a tape machine, an analog mastering console, another tape machine, and then a cutting lathe. In zone one, you would calibrate your tape machine. That was pretty much the only option you had. You could do, there was different, you know, ips, and there was just a tone control. That's pretty much it. You want to make sure that everything is as it was mixed so that you would be transferring a faithful tape through your console. The analog console, it's the place where the cool EQs and compressors and things go, and we still do that to this day. Then in zone three, this is the other tape machine. This would be the part where a mastering engineer would sequence the album to, so they could get a song to fade out the way they wanted to on the analog console, and then they would stop that tape machine, they would reel up the next song, and then they would cue that second tape machine to where they wanted the next song to come in hit play, hit record, and now you're off with a second song and you end up with one master tape for the whole album, which would be, of course, transferred to the cutting lathe. So one day the computer was invented, and not too long after that we figured out that we could use computers as digital tape machines, basically. So the tape machines on either side of the analog console in zone one and three disappeared. Boom! And now there's two digital tape machines, aka two computers, on either side of your analog console. Now, tons of records that have shaped our childhoods were mastered in this way. But a more recent development, as computers have gotten more powerful, is that first computer, the original Zone 1 tape machine, is gone. And the Zone 3 capture tape machine is routed to the front of the analog console and is serving as both Zone 1 and Zone 3. The lines have blurred. And sometimes nowadays, even the analog console is removed from the equation and people are mastering entirely in the box. Now, don't let anyone shame you for mastering entirely in the box. It is a totally valid way to master music, but you need to understand the history of where mastering came from in order to do it right. It's always good to know your roots. So the important takeaway here is that the limiter traditionally sits in zone three after analog has been doing all the heavy lifting, after the analog has been converted back into digital and probably clipped back into digital. It's also important to note that major releases over the last several decades have been characterized sonically by this placement technique of the limiter in zone three after A to D. And of course, the only other takeaway from this entire video is that if you want to get better masters, you need to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell for this channel. So back to the pop quiz then. What's the most important control on a limiter and why? Well, tell me, what is a limiter? It's a compressor. Except the ratio has been maxed out and ripped off the machine, and the attack has been minimized and ripped off the machine. The threshold is not really something you hear as much as it is an instruction to the computer, this is where I want you to start limiting. So that leaves us with only one control left the most important control, the release time. Release can make a groove feel rushed, or dragged, or right in the pocket. 
My goal whenever I reach for a limiter is to dial in the release to optimize the pocket. But if you have transients that are hitting your limiter at different levels, your release time pocket gets thrown off. When I reach for a limiter, I'm specifically looking for 1 dB of limiter sound or 2 dB of limiter sound, no more, no less, exactly 2 dB of the limiter sound or 6 dB sometimes, you know, EDM, it works. So even when I'm mastering entirely in the box, I keep the three zone principle in mind. I will put a clipper in place of an A to D converter before I use a limiter and that clipper is going to catch all the weird and wild transients before the limiter does its consistent limiting one decibel at a time two decibels at a time half a db of limiting but a specific amount of limiting on every transient this technique reinforces the pocket and it creates that polished major label sound I challenge you to try it I think you're gonna love it okay is that... I hope I hit record did I hit record yeah I hit record okay <laughs> but you should understand the history from whence you came. People say that from whence you came. Yeah, they say that. Do you say that? <laughs> Do I say that? No, I don't say that. <laughs>